Hello everybody, uh, welcome. This is uh, Rocky Mike, coach of the Virginia Victinis, and we're here to talk to you about uh, my draft analysis for the BBR D League season one. Um, yeah, we were uh, fortunate enough to be accepted into the into the league, and uh, yeah, very happy, very excited. We will be um, battling out the season with another 15 coaches uh, since this uh, is a 16 coach league that has um, two divisions, the Scarlet Division and the Violet Division. I am on the Scarlet Division, which I am very happy since Scarlet is the be is the superior game. Fight me otherwise. Other than that, um, the league will be seven weeks long and then we will go to playoffs and whatnot. Uh, the games are actually not interdivisional, so we will be facing players from other divisions. They're just going to be randomized, uh, which is fun, uh, which is fun, fine, I guess. Uh, I mean, it doesn't matter to me either way. Um, I just want to have good battles. I want to have fun. And I want to use some, you know, good Pokemon. Um, but anyway, so yeah, just going into the draft. Um, first of all, the rules is that uh, we were giving 110 points to draft between 9 to 11 Pokemon. So we have some flexibility there, right? And um, I ended up getting um, pick number six out of eight in the Scarlet Division, which is, it's not great. <laughs> to be fairly honest with you, I wasn't super happy with it, but there's nothing I can do. Um, it is not as bad as four and five, in my opinion, since those are smack in the middle. And it requires extremely good drafters to be able to build good teams with those uh, with those positions, which I am not. I'll be the first one to tell you. Um, but you know, six is right outside that. You're not on the top of the of the of the draft, and so you're technically, quote unquote, not gonna get some of the boss's stuff. You're also not on the bottom, which means you don't have the wheel. Um, yeah, it's a weird position. It's fine at this point. I'm used to getting bad bad draft positions on most of my draft leaks, um, so it's not a big deal. We we'll do the best we can. Um, another thing that we had to take into consideration for the draft is Terra and how the league decided to handle it, because every league is handling is handling it very different. Um, I am on, I think this is my seventh league this generation between both Wi-Fi and Showdown, and um, not a single league, not a single league between. <laughs> Not, not two single leagues had, had the same terror rules for their Pokemon. So yeah, at this point, it's, very, it's just fun just to play in different leagues to find out what their terror rules is going to be. Uh, the VVR for this league decided to uh, change up the rules a little bit from the main VVR league um, a couple of weeks ago that just wrapped up, where they could only select one Pokemon as the terror captain and they could also uh, select one type, I believe. Of what they could Terra, maybe two, uh, and it was free. Basically, you draft your you pool with your budget, and then you know you get to uh, select whatever whichever Pokemon. So in theory, I mean, what I think is you will select your best Pokemon. But I digress. Um, the new rule for this season, I don't know if the main league will be using this rule, but the D league, uh, what we will be doing is basically you still get to select one Terra captain. Per team, doesn't matter, you know, if you select one of the worst ones, you still get to select one. And also, um, you get to select two Terra types that you can Terra select. One of them needs to be your stab. Uh, if you are a Pokemon with only one type, of course, you only get to Terra stabilize into your one type. But if you uh, have two types, then you can select one of them. The other Terra type that you get to select is another one of the 16 on the game or 17 on the game. Uh, so yeah, very interesting. However, uh, these uh, Terra captains will actually have a cost on your budget this time, which will be about 20% of the cost of the month. So the higher the tier the Pokemon is that you want to Terra stabilize or make your Terra captain, the more points it's going to cost you. I believe the most it can cause uh, a, Pokemon, a Pokemon can cost you is four points if you select one of the uh, 18, point, 18 point Pokemon to Terrastalite, which is the top of the top of the uh, tier list. Uh, or you could just pay one point to Terrastalite, one of your one point Pokemon. Uh, 
If somebody, I, I don't, I don't think I seen everybody stairs, Captain. But if somebody did that, they are an absolute legend. I'm just gonna say that. Uh, but I'm not that type of legend, so you know I'm gonna be selecting something busted to terrestrialize. Anyway, uh, so yeah, I decided. Uh, I didn't decide. I, I ended up getting um, pick number six overall in the division, and um, yeah, I wasn't expecting to get. I wasn't expecting to get anything busted. I was expecting to get something uh, good, uh, but not busted, obviously. Uh, and <laughs> it's going to be interesting when we get to my first pick here in a few seconds. Um, some of the stats that went before me, uh, you know, it makes sense. Like Chien Pao, for example, was the number one pick of the draft. Uh, being that Flutter Ming is banned, and thank God. Um, yeah, but Chien Pao makes absolute sense being number one overall pick. I have him on another two leagues, one where he can terrestrialize and one where he cannot terrestrialize. That thing is posted either way, and it's an excellent Pokemon. So that being the first overall pick on the on the division makes absolute sense. Uh, some of the other ones, maybe not so much. I mean, Palafin is a very good Pokemon, uh, but it's also very... It's not very hard to use, but it's somewhat... It's a little bit tricky to use, I'm just going to say that I... It's very powerful, but uh, I see a lot of people misuse it. Uh, Dragonite, when when you realize that you can tear on that, it is busted. Um, I was actually hoping to get Dragonite. I thought it would be me tier, so I was hoping that it would get to me, and it got his knight literally one turn before me. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, the other two things that went before me will be Rory Moon and Chi Yu, which are absolutely great Pokemon. However, um, they're even better when they can terrestrialize, and I believe both coaches that draft them decided to make them the third captains. Good on them, excellent choice. Uh, but if you've been keeping count and you know your tiers or <laughs> you know your competitive Pokemon, you, there is one particular thing that you probably haven't heard. Uh, so, and that I ended up, you know, it just ended up falling to me, and I decided, <laughs> heck, why not? So for our overall first pick, we had no one but the one and only Dragapult. Yep. So we got Dragapult for our first pick at number six. I, that is crazy. I think this Pokemon, I personally think this Pokemon is either number one, number two overall in the, in the format with Flutterman being, being banned. Flutterman is number one, two, and three to, by, by itself. But, uh, you know, with that, Xianpao and this thing are the best things in the format in my humble opinion i could be wrong i've been wrong before i will be wrong again but that's just my opinion take into account the fact that it can also terrestrialize yeah that's thing this thing is gonna be busted um so yeah and uh yeah my first uh, my first pick this gives me a dragon which is great gives me a ghost which is also completely busted into uh, on on jack nine uh the best type in the game in my opinion uh, it gives me uh, the fastest Pokemon in the format. Electrode is not a Pokemon. That it doesn't exist. Electro is a light. So don't mention that to me. Uh, so yeah, we had the fastest Pokemon in the format since Serrar is not in the game yet. Uh, and you know, offensive stats are not bad. 120 in attack, which is fantastic. And 100 in uh, special attack, also great. Uh, bulk is not even bad. Especially given that you have so much speed, base speed. The majority of the weeks, you can afford to run a lot of bulk on this thing. Uh, so yeah, fantastic Pokemon. Uh, two main abilities are, in are incredibly good. Clear body allows me to ignore Intimidates, ignore uh, stick webs. Uh, Infiltrator just goes through subs and screens, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, Curse body could be it's situational. Probably won't be using it, but you know, it could come clutch. Uh, it has messed me up before. So yeah. Dragapult, good old reliable. First time I'm getting to use it in Gen 9 because I've been trying to use the new things. Uh, but, you know, this Pokemon has been very nice to me. It won me the uh, YCL last season on Gen 8, the last season of YCL Gen 8, right? And it also helped me uh, snatch the regular season for PAX Season 2. Um, so, yeah, I, I love this Pokemon. Uh, as far as, I mean, spoiler alert, we had to declare our, our Terras at the very end of the draft, but. You can see it on your screen, so what matters, right? We ended up deciding going to go with uh, Ghost for our Stab Terra, which I love. Uh, this thing is just going to hit so hard, and I have other reasons for that as well, which I'll get in 
just a second. Uh, for my second one, I have a lot of options. I could have chosen a defensive uh, Terra like Fairy. Uh, I was also looking at Steel maybe, uh, but I also uh, consider fighting and fire. Ultimately, uh, we ended up going with fire uh, just because uh, the combination of ghost and fire seems like very hard for anything to prep for, uh, which is fantastic. Um, and yeah, um, I don't even need to. Fire can be a decent uh, defensive Terra because it resists Moonblast, it resists Ice Beams, and it removes the, at the very least, it removes the uh, weaknesses on the other types. Um, Plus, it makes me immune to fight, uh, to to getting burned, I guess. Um, so yeah, Dragapult, I am very happy, and I thank all the other coaches for letting me nab this at number six. Uh, and yeah, that's gonna be the number one pick. So moving on to my second pick, um, I wanted to get something that will pair well with Dragapult. Uh, you will think, you know, the, the common belief says, you know, just just grab Dragon Fairy Steel for your core. Um, and yeah, that's true. Um, you could also go with the Ghost Dark Fighting Core, I guess. Uh, or is it Ghost... No, no, no. That, that, that other core is Dark Fighting. Psychic, like, whatever. Anyway. Uh, yeah, anyway. I, I decided to go a little bit unconventional. Uh, as to not to try to grab Fairy or Steel yet. Uh, I wanted to grab something that will pair with, with Dragapult and it will give me some sort of a strategy. Uh, if you are somebody that watched my, specifically my pack season, last season, season 2, uh, there is one specific second Dragon Ball that is completely a monster, and that is the Hex set. Mostly because, you know, no pursuit, so ghost types are good to go, and uh, if you ever manage to get uh, your opponent's status, Hex doubles in power, plus I can potentially Terra Dragon Ball into Ghost and get a, basically adaptability for free. Um, which would be fantastic. So I was looking into, you know, hey, I want something that will work with that strategy. I, I also need hazards, obviously, and I also would like some removal because removal is very premium this generation uh, since so many things log, loss, uh, default. Uh, and if you put two and two together, then you should probably be able to anticipate that my number two pick probably a little bit early in the draft, but I didn't want anybody to snipe me on it. We're going with Glimora. Uh, I think Glimora is the perfect uh, companion for Dragapult. And what I want to do, I want to be able to status things, and Glimora just sets up Toxic Spikes for free, obviously, with uh, Toxic Degree. It also gives me, uh, it also gives me um, you know, removable Mortal Spin, plus being able to poison other things, since, which is nice because, you know, the days of everything having Toxic are, are gone. Uh, and it's not a slouch either when it comes to offense, um, given that his move pool is very good. He gets a stupid amount of coverage for some reason. Uh, and 130 base power special attack uh, is, is, is actually pretty nice. Uh, 86 speed is decent. Uh, I'm not going to complain about it. Uh, but yeah, the main quality is why I drafted this Pokemon. Have been mentioned already. It gives me hazards, all three of them except sticky weapons, I guess. Uh, but it also can be offensive, and it also gives me removal. And it removes top six spikes just by switching it. So, uh, yeah, like I said, maybe it was a little bit early to draft it in round two. I could have drafted a better Pokemon uh, and tried to snap this at num around in round three, but I don't know, man. I, I didn't want this thing to be sniped. Also, I've been meaning to use this the entire generation. I just can never get it because I prioritize other things. So yeah, we're gonna grab Grimora number two and hopefully it will put in a good performance. Um, as far as my third pick, uh, for my third pick, for my third pick, I use a very interesting rationale. I believe this is uh, OG Albina's reasoning of you should draft the best Pokemon on the, on the board every, every turn. Uh, I don't agree with that. I prefer to draft what is best for your team, but at the same time, I was getting a little scared because Drapple is fantastic, Limora is okay, but the other teams were drafting, just they literally were drafting the best thing on the on, on, on draft for. Um, you know, uh, some people managed to get a, a Nihilate with Chiyu, some people managed to get a, you know, 
I don't know. There, there are a lot of examples that I can think of right now, but anyway, I, I started freaking out a little bit. I just wanted something strong. Most of the things that I want, that I consider being strong were taken. I I didn't end up. I guess what I'm trying to say is I didn't end up taking my last my third Pokemon because I wanted it. I having I I ended up taking it because I have to. Uh, so for our third pick, we ended up grabbing the best Pokemon still available on the board at the time, Meowth Now, please don't get me wrong, Meowth is an excellent Pokemon. It's fantastic pivot. It gets Protean, which is awesome. Uh, even Overgrow, I think, is a very is a very underrated uh, ability. Uh, this is just coming from me from using Cinderace and Greninja on my very last two draft leagues on Gen A and then doing amazing with Blaze and uh, Torrent uh, just because the boost on their the boost they get once they get to that 33% is, is ridiculous so yeah and an overgrow boosted um, flower trick is no joke I like legit it can kill things that it shouldn't be killing uh, so yeah, it's, that's good, but you know, other than that, this Pokemon is just great. Uh, it, it gets me access, it gives me a good speed tier in 123 to close the gap a little bit between Dragon Ball and Glamora. It gives me, it's a great attack with 110, uh, mostly because it will pr probably be getting a stab every time I use at the attack. If you know about the nerf protein, you know what I mean. Uh, but it also gives me access to knockoff, which is great. Because again, it's another one of those moves that will completely, uh, I guess, perch in Generation Nine. Not a lot of things get it, and it's an amazing utility move. It's one of my favorite moves for sure. I just love clicking knockouts on things. Um, and yeah, it has a it has a pretty good uh, it has a pretty it has a pretty pretty good uh, move pool. Uh, you know, you get your stabs, you get a uh, electric coverage, you get a. Uh, um, you even get rock moves on this thing. Somebody killed my Talonflame with this dang thing the other day. Uh, and you know, U-turn of course, which is the, the best move in the game. Uh, just pivoting in and out, which is uh, very much my play style. If you had seen my games before, my leagues before. Um, and yeah, I don't have much else to say. Oh, find out this. I find out about this the other day too, which I didn't know, but now I know. This thing also gets spikes and toxic spikes. Uh, why? I don't know, but I'll take it. Uh, the more hazards we can have, the better. Um, so yeah, I I didn't want to draft this Pokemon not because it's not great. It's mostly because I have him on the YCL, and I'm trying to try other things. Uh, realistically, I did wanted to have either Cinderace or Greninja. They were taken before me. Uh, having to grab this, I'm not gonna complain. If you all want me to use Mascara, I'll be happy to use Mascara again. Uh, so yeah, that's number pick number three. For my pick number four. You can see it. We're going with Daddy as himself. Scissor. Um, yeah, I just needed a steel type. And uh, they were starting to run slim on the board. Uh, again, Scissor is a nice people there. Uh, because he's still type with U-turn. And, you know, it gives me priority. Uh, which is fantastic. Um, at the same time, I don't want my only removal to be uh, Mortal Spin. Because that can be blocked by steel types. And even if it couldn't, I, I just not a fan of only having one remover on your roster, just because it can allow your opponent to exploit that. Um, and the, and Scissor luckily uh, still has access to Defog. It has lost Roost, it has lost uh, Knockoff, but he gained close combat, which is fantastic. You know, it does what it does. It comes in, you turn Swords and says it bullet punches. Um, it gives me a little bit more bulk, a lot more bulk. Although it's not a wall, but you know, at the end of the day, uh, it's a solid pairing. It helps me with the fairies. Uh, most fairies have lost their fire coverage. Uh, I mean, I know Sylveon, for example, can't touch this thing unless it tears in the fire. Maybe shouldn't shadow balls, but that's not really a thing. Um, so yeah, it pairs well, I guess, with Dragapult. And the main reason is, you know, I like it is because it's a pivot. I was also looking at getting Klefki in here, but I decided getting just just getting Caesar. I'm using Klefki in another league. Uh, Caesar seems fine. I don't think I ever actually drafted in a league. I had drafted Mega Caesar before, but if you ever have used Mega Caesar and Caesar in the past, they just play very differently, very differently. Mega Caesar is such a good Pokemon. But in any case, uh, I'm excited to grab Caesar. Um, 
Loki. Another reason why I'm happy to draft this is because I'm gonna be using my shiny scissor and shiny scissor looks fantastic in generation nine. That metallic green texture, all met all metallic shinies look great on, on, on Gen 9, but scissor just looks amazing. So yeah, another reason. Anyway, uh, that's gonna be our round number four, uh, round four pick. Uh, as far as uh, yeah. Anyway, moving on. Uh, for my number five pick, uh, I was looking at Rotten Wash. I think that that is uh, I think it's a good pairing into I guess the rest of my team. Uh, a good water type for sure. Uh, it sucks that he lost Defog. It sucks. It sucks that he lost Pain Split. I'm more sad about Pain Split than Defog to be honest. Uh, and a lot of people were grabbing stuff. I was also looking at Rotten Heat because I think Rotten Heat is actually a pretty good Pokemon. People sleep on it. Um, and I had used it before and it's great. Um, but the fact that I ended up grabbing Caesar, I don't know. A, a bunch of different things led to my decision to grab the next Pokemon. Like I said, I enjoy Peabots. Uh, it, it is very much my play style, you know, to position myself to try to win. Um, and. Look, funnily enough, I haven't been able to draft this Pokemon uh, this generation yet, even though I have been in a lot of drafts. It always gets taken early for some reason. And in some things it makes sense, like Chien Pao pairing with this Pokemon makes a lot of sense, but I don't know. This time it decided to last until uh, pick number five, so I was like, hey, why not? So we're taking Slow King, baby. Yep. Uh, the King of Slows. This Pokemon has done what the impossible and has surpassed is Britain Slowbro as the best slow twin, uh, mostly because Slowbro lost Regenerator. This thing also lost it, but this thing gets access to Chili Reception, uh, which it's a Peabot move, and it gives and it removes um, my opponent's, I guess, uh, weather with snow. Um, the snow doesn't do anything for me, but ultimately, you know, it doesn't hurt me either since now it doesn't chip anything but ice anymore. Uh, and like I say, at, at the very worst, I get, uh, you know, I remove my opponent's weather conditions like sun or rain or sandstorm or whatever. Uh, but yeah, no, the main reason why I grabbed this Pokemon is because it, it gets regenerator, which is still busted. Thank you for not nerfing that. And uh, it gives me, you know, more pivots, uh, more... Uh, this one is a special pivot actually, which actually can take a lot of physical attacks too. Uh, most people actually run this defensive. Uh, it, it also gives me a resistance to fire, which I desperately needed, given that I have both scissors and Yaskrada. Uh, Dragon Ball is not resistance. Uh, so yeah. Uh, sucks that he lost his goal, but you know, it is what it is. We will take what we can get. And uh, yeah, I'm just happy with this pick, man. Um, it gives me Trick Room if I ever need it. If I ever need to fight Trick Room, this thing can reverse it or try to abuse it. It still can set up. It still gets reliable recovery with Slack Off, so it's going to be really hard to kill for my opponents. Uh, between Slack Off and Regenerator, uh, it gets utility moves like Thunder Wave and Yawn. Uh, and, you know, gets Body Press. Uh, I think it might, it might still get IC Armor. I, I don't remember. Uh, so yeah, overall, uh, annoying Pokemon for my opponents, and the more I can annoy my opponents, the happier I am. Um, but yeah, um, happy to get this because it gives me a lot of more bulk that my team was needing. My first picks are very uh, offensive, that uh, they're not the bulkiest, right? So the fact that this thing can come in and come out and just heal uh, is just fantastic. Uh, so for my next pick... Um, like I mentioned already, I, I am a fire and removal. I am I am a fire removal. Uh, speed tier is a little bit wonky still. Uh, I don't know, man. I I just <laughs> I just decided I, was, I I saw this on the board. I just decided to go with it. Also, uh, if you play Mousehole, if you know Mousehole, you know that this thing can be the most annoying thing on the war. Uh, Population Bomb is just a busted move. Population Bomb can 2 EKO everything in the game that is not immune to it. Uh, which is great, I guess. Uh, but to be honest with you, 
that's not the reason why I drafted Mousehole. I, li I like that Mousehole gets access to it, and I like that my opponents are going to have to prep for it, and that's the main reason why I like it, because it's going to force a lot of prep for my opponents that hopefully, you know, draws attention away from other Pokemon like Dragapult and Muscrata or even Glimora or even Slowking, you know, if you bring a Fighting type just to, to deal with this, Slowking can have used that. Um, but I've been using Mousehole in a different league lately, and I've been noticing that it has a lot more value than what it is. Actually, the main reason why I noticed that Mousehole can be actually a pretty decent utility Pokemon has been from watching BGC streams from the Pokemon company, of all things, where most people are using Mousehole, you know, for, you know, uh, support in BGC's doubles, uh, because it has get friend guard. But regardless, you know, this Pokemon uh, is so fast that you don't necessarily need to run a lot of investment on speed, which you can afford to put it on his defense and bulk to at least leave one or two hits. And uh, it gets access to a move that I think is actually more a little bit, maybe not as annoying as population, but it's also very annoying. That being Super Fang. Super Fang just doesn't care about anything other than ghost types. It will take half your help, and if I can tell half your help on your wall, that might just be enough for me to completely destroy your wall with, you know, one of my sweepers or one of my breakers, uh, which is something that I really like. Uh, this thing also gets access to Tidy Up, which again uh, is guaranteed removal. There's nothing in the game that blocks that, which I love. Uh, unfortunately, I find out after drafting this that Tidy Up removes hazards from both sides, not just mine, which is so crushing, but you know what? <laughs> it's fine, I'll take it. Uh, other than that, uh, you know, again, this can be, I didn't draft this Pokemon to be my offense. I draft my, this Pokemon to be utility. It gets access to U-turn to Peabody. It gets access to Ton to stop, you know, annoying things. It gets access to Switcheroo to be able to, you know, cripple walls if I bring something. It's just, like I said, it, it's, a, it's a very versatile Pokemon. It forces a lot of prep. It gives me, again, speed tiers. Uh, you're gonna hear this a lot, but again, it's a speed tier. I am, I have a, I have a speed tier in 140s right now, have a speed tier in 120s, now I have a speed tier in 110s. Uh, so, you know, it's not giving, I'm trying not to give gaps to my opponents that I, they can abuse where they can, you know, afford to bring something like an Adamant something just because I don't have anything of that tier. Um, and, you know, an immunity to Ghost, which is the best type on the game, I'm going to say it again right now, uh, it's also nice. So, yeah, mouse hole. Um, and you know what? One of these days, I just might just decide, you know, this thing is going to sweep this week, and, you know, my opponent's going to have a really tough time uh, dealing with it. I promise you that. But, you know, we'll see. Anyway, uh, that's about half my draft. Uh, sorry if I'm taking long. I'm just trying to explain what I drafted, the stuff that I drafted. Not just say, oh, I drafted it because it's a good Pokemon, and that's it. So yeah, next up, um, I'm still a little bit weak to, uh, I'm not weak to ground, but I also don't have the best resistance since my grass type is, uh, you know, fairly frail and uh, my, my steel type is actually neutral to it. Um, no, my bog type is actually neutral to it, I guess. So I don't have very, very many resistance to ground, which is not the worst, but I would like to have something that can, you know, uh, that doesn't care about it. Uh, also, looking at the types that I'm missing, I'm missing quite a few other types. Uh, there is no, <laughs> there's no target kiss this generation, which I would have probably drafted if I, if I was still here, just to have a fine, uh, an immune, uh, a fairy that is immune to, uh, to ground. But uh, you know, it wasn't meant to be. So anyway, uh, I don't, I didn't like the flying types that I saw available. So I decided to go for the next option is to grab Levitator. With the points that I have left, I actually still have enough points to grab pretty decent Levitator myself. So we ended up dropping from hit. And I did mention this before, right? That's called foreshadowing. Um, I actually think this is a pretty good Pokemon. I, I actually think this is... I don't think this Pokemon is better than Rotten Wash. Don't get me wrong. But I like it better than Rotten Wash. I understand that it's weak to rocks, but 99% of the time this thing just rocks boot. Runs rocks boots anyway. Um, Over here is slightly more reliable than um, than water uh, than Hydro Pump. And I don't know, man. I just like the the typing on Rotten Hit better than I like the typing on Rotten Wash. This that's just my hot take. If if you don't agree with it, that's completely fine. At the same time, you know. It gives me a Levitator, which is great. It gives me a Nuke uh, because it does get 
nasty plot, so it can nuke things with overheat. Uh, it's a nice pivot. It has options to not only burn, but to also paralyze my opponents, which again synergizes with the hex strategies for Paul. Um, and yeah, no, overall it's just a it's just a fun Pokemon. It's just a very reliable Pokemon. It may not come every week, but the weeks that it come, I expect it to make a difference. And uh, and it gives me some good bulk, both in the. Uh, oh, Defenses in both defenses. Uh, HP is not great, but you know it's what it is, and it's decently fast. So it's fast enough where you can make a decent sculptor. You can outspeed. Uh, I believe this thing outspeeds Chiampao by one point if it's choice scarf. Uh, so yeah, that's just great. Um, so yeah, no other, nothing else I can say about Rodon here other than you know. I, I am very familiar with it, I had drafted it before, I have won leaks with it before, so I know it is a very good Pokemon. But anyway, uh, moving on to the next pick. Um, one thing I don't have is a fighting type, and uh, given that one of the most annoying, the, the two most annoying things for Dragapult are fairies, are, but those can be deal with, you know, ghost type moves. Uh, Dark, dark types, which are a little bit more annoying because their apple doesn't get coverage for those other than U-turn and uh, um, what you call uh, normal types, we are completely immune to um, uh, ghost stab. Uh, so obviously you want to pair uh, Dragapult with things that can cover those things. Uh, I think that fairies are very well covered right now with uh, Limora, Sister and Rotten. Uh, but I don't have much for uh, normal types and dark types right now. So um, particularly one of my walls is actually weak to dark types. So I decided I need to get a fighting type. Uh, luckily for me at this point of the draft there was a lot of uh, options for fighting types on the board. Uh, you still could get uh, any of... Uh, no, you could get... Uh, I could get Tauros, Paldean Tauros, which is underrated in my opinion. Uh, I love the speed on 110. Um, but I could also get Primate, which uh, is near and dear to my heart. I won a league with it recently, and uh, he just uh, he gets access to Rage Fist, which is completely busted. And uh, but you know that thing, I think that thing is much better when you can freely terrestrialize it to you know play around your opponents. Uh, it also gets access to uh, people uh, people move with a uh, U-turn, and it gets access to Stellar Rocks for some reason, and ton. So it, it makes a decent lead a lot of times too. Uh, but like I said, I just I just recently used Primate, and uh, I uh, I just recently used Primate, so I'm trying to use new things. Uh, one thing that I saw on the board that I really like uh, is uh, my next pick, Flamigo. Uh, yeah, Flamigo. Um, there are a lot of reasons why I like this Pokemon. The main reason is always going to be Scrappy, just a fighting type that uh, doesn't care about ghost types. It's fantastic. This thing just spawns it stabs for the most part, which is good because it really doesn't have anything else other than it's bad. It stabs from what I've seen. Uh, but yeah, I had, had I had to face this once and I realized that even with anything I had, switching into a choice one thing with, from this thing is very difficult. Uh, but I also like the speed tier because now I have a Pokemon on the 90 speed tier, which I didn't have before. Uh, and again, very good for uh, uh, choice sets. It, both choice cards and choice man work very nicely with this Pokemon. Um, it's another immunity to uh, it's another immunity to ground, which is great. Uh, but like I said, I have a lot of people think on my team. Let me see: uh, one, two, three, four, five, six of the seven prior Pokemon's that I drafted before drafting this thing have can pivot. So being able to pivot into this in front of a wall that is either weakening or is weak to it is just going to be a nightmare for my opponents to prepare. Or at least that's what I think. Um, other than that, there's not much you can think you can say about this. I guess the HP is decent, but defenses the stats are not very good. So I don't think it's going to be setting up. But you know, who knows? I somebody surprised me with a agility set from this thing, which I guess agility. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. Flamigo. Also, you know, I never used it before, and it seems fun. I've seen some people using it in a very fun way. So hopefully, you know, I can use it. Uh, I can make it justice, and uh, yeah, we'll go with Flamigo. Anyway, uh, we're getting down to the last. You know, at this point, I could make one pick. I could make three picks. Uh, that was up to me. Uh, 
I only have six points left. Um, and I still have some holes on my team that I would like to patch. Unfortunately, with six, six points, I'm probably not going to be patching many of those holes. So, you know, just grab whatever you can, the best you can, and whatever. Anyway, uh, if you being, you know, if you can see my team, uh, you may notice I still don't have a fairy. Uh, it's not the end of the war. I'm not super weak to dragon. Uh, however, and, and fairies are very scared on scars, scarce on Gen 9. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I would like to have one. Uh, I would like to have more pivots. Uh, I, you know, I, I should be the Virginia pivoters or something like that. Um, but anyway, um, I would like to have something like that. Um, a Pokemon that I actually wasn't on the draft board, uh, which I was fine with because I just wanted to draft it. I didn't want anybody to snipe me. I figured people would have to start taking one pointers at some point. Uh, and I think that it's a little bit underrated. If, 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 if it was me, I would have put it probably at the two-point mark. But I would take it at one point. That's not a problem. Um, and that is Morgram. Uh, this Pokemon is annoying. And a hot take, I think this Pokemon in certain scenarios is actually better than Grimmsnarl. Uh, just because it's bulkier than Grimmsnarl. Grimmsnarl. Uh, with the EV life. It doesn't get access to recovery on leftovers, I guess, but Griffinsnarl really doesn't need that, to be honest with you. I mean, half the Griffinsnarl that I see in run, like Scream anyway. Um, so yeah, I like Wargrang. I think it's very cheap. It gives me a util it gives me a fairy, which is not an offensive fairy, but it's a defensive fairy, and it gets a lot of utility moves. It gets you Thunder Wave. It gets, you know, both screens. And most important of all, it gets Parting Shot, which I love. I mean, I hate that it lost Knockoff, but I love that it got Parting Shot because, you know, again, more pivoting. But it's an even better pivoting because it will send me, in, it, it will send me into one of my sweepers, and it will weaken my opponent to whether they will have to choose whether they want to switch or whether they want to, you know, die uh, or let me set up or, you know, it, you know what I mean. Uh, so Prankster is the best ability, the only ability I will be running on this team. Uh, maybe it, It's not the type of Pokemon that will come to every game, but when it comes, I expect to make some sort of impact. Uh, I have had to face it before and it was very annoying. Um, so yeah, Morgan. I'm very happy with this. Uh, I would have taken this Pokemon if it would have been two points uh, anyway, but uh, they put it at one point and I'm not gonna complain. So I'm very happy with this. Uh, anyway, moving to my next pick. I have one point left. Um, I have one point left. This thing was at one point. I, I say, why not, right? It's, it's a freaking Pikachu. I mean, you all know what it is. It still gets access to light ro li lighting light bulb which makes it uh if i if i remember that is mogon article correctly it makes its offenses as strong as the Oxys attack which is no joke uh so yeah i mean there's no reason to run anything else on this thing right uh but yeah i it gives me a 90 base speed i guess and this is one of those one point tier pokemons that opponents just have to prep for i mean you cannot just ignore it you could drive something like i don't know uh I don't know, a Gabite, your opponent's never gonna prep for that. But Pikachu, your opponent has to prep for it. I mean, e even if there's very unlikely not coming, there's always that little possibility that it comes in and it just rips your team apart. Uh, it can take a hit, it cannot take a hit, but you know, with 90 base speed, your walls are not when I want to be dealing with this, especially when, can I, when you can just ball switch to avoid having to take hits. Uh, so yeah, I, I, it's not that I needed it or I wanted it, I just grabbed it because it was the best thing available at one point. Uh, and just to wrap, wrap up my team, um, I don't have a ground type. I don't think it's the end of the world. Uh, this generation's electric types are just not as good as they used to be. I guess Tapu Koko and Serra are not being on the game right now. No Sabdos is, you know contributes to that a lot, but at the same time, you know, having a ground type is always good. I have five points. There was a ground type on the board for five points. I say, why not? Why not grab it? So we ended up grabbing Sanaconda. Um, I don't like this Pokemon. Uh, I talk a lot of trash last generation to it, <laughs> which is funny that I ended up grabbing it. But again, last generation, you needed a ground type, especially especially with Reggie Lake, you know, and, and being a thing. Uh, 
but this generation I don't think they're as important as 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 before. Um, in theory, this Pokemon is fun, but that's you know in theory, uh, it's very mediocre Pokemon. I guess you know in theory you can do a lot of things with it. You can technically Dragon Dance with it, right, and sweep, but not really. Nobody's gonna fear that. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, it gives me a Stell Rocks, which is another Stell Rocker, which is great, because I don't have a whole lot of them to be honest with you. Uh, it gives me access to sand if I ever wanted. Uh, again, it does not inform me, but at the same time, you know, it could remove weather from my opponents, or it could just chip things, right? Uh, break, sash break, break sashes, put stuff on board. Um, but the main thing why I, why, why I con even consider getting this Pokemon is because it gets access to Glare, and that's just gonna annoy my opponents. Uh, Glare is a normal time move that has 100% accuracy and will paralyze. Uh, and we will paralyze. Uh, Ground types, which is fantastic for Dragapult. Uh, and you know, speed tiers, it, it fills a hole between the 60s and the 80s that I had before. Uh, it's no slouch, at least with 107 attack, to where, you know, it's not Toxapex where you can just set a sub in front of it and, you know, your opponent can do nothing about it. 107 attack is not the best, but it's good enough to where, you know, it can have some. Offense present, uh, offensive presence like Bulldoze, for example, prevent a Dragon Dancer from just Dragon Dancing for free or something like that. Um, and you know, 125 on, on defense on defense side is decent enough. Um, yeah, not the best Pokemon in the world. I don't expect to do much, but you know, it's nice to have. Uh, and you know, it feels a role. It feels a speed tier, and you know, it's decent utility. So what else can I say? But anyway, uh, if you stick around this long. Thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, I will try to do my best this season to give you all the best match as possible. I will forewarn you that whenever I lose, I get really salty. Uh, please ignore that. Uh, make fun of me, that's completely fine. I don't mean any harm. It's just, you know, that's just my competitive nature and my me just being bad at losing. Uh, but other than that, you know, uh, I wanna, again, I wanna thank the commissioners for letting me in the season. And uh, good luck to all the coaches. Uh, I look forward to battle every single one of them. And uh, we'll, you know, we'll be uploading every Monday. Uh, so yeah, we'll see you next Monday for the first week of battles.